know someone who idolizes a famous person a little bit too much. For Sophie, her obsession with her favorite celebrity led to something truly terrifying. Sophie loved everything about her favorite celebrity, who for now we'll just call Mindy. She especially loved Mindy's looks. She would buy the same clothes, get the same hairstyle, and buy the same jewelry. She did everything to look exactly like her. So one day, Sophie saw from Mindy's Instagram that she was about to go to this restaurant. So Sophie showed up at that restaurant first and waited until Mindy came. She had wanted to get plastic surgery for a while, and she thought, what better than to get a real-life reference photo for my doctor? Soon, Mindy came and sat down and ordered. Sophie tried to compose herself, but when Sophie saw that Mindy got up to go to the bathroom, she followed. Then she pretended to be someone that Mindy met at an event and probably forgot about, so she wouldn't seem like just another fan. Then she leaned in and asked to take a photo together. The next day, she walked into her doctor's office with the reference in hand and said, here's exactly what I want to look like, and demanded the face be sewn into hers. Did we switch to a different dimension in 2021? We need to talk about this. Okay, so everyone's been talking about how last year, 2020 felt really off to a lot of people, not just because of COVID, but just because of time and everything. So the theory goes that in 2020, we were all put into an alternate dimension, which is why things felt off. And once it became 2021, we were all transported back to our original dimension. It sounds crazy, I know, but please just listen to this evidence. Okay, number one, let's talk about the New Year's Eve ball drop. So if you're watching the ball drop this year, you might've noticed that the ball dropped at exactly 12.01 this year you're not midnight. This is the first time ever that the ball drop has been off. People think it's because we're transporting from one dimension to the other and it messed up the time. Speaking of time, technology still thinks that we're in 2020 for some reason. And people are finding that old Mandela effects are going back to normal. For example, there used to be a huge Mandela effect that everyone thought Fruit Loop spelled fruit with two O's, but it was actually spelled as fruit. But now all of a sudden it's back how we remembered it with two O's. But y'all, I literally used to be obsessed with Mandela effects and I wrote them down in 2017 and it says Fruit Loops was actually Fruit Loops. <laughs> Urban legends that will haunt you. The dead boyfriend. A girl and her boyfriend were making out in his car in the middle of the woods so that way no one could see them. When they were done, the boy got out to go pee while the girl safely waited in the car. After waiting for five minutes, the girl got out of her car to go search for her boyfriend, but then she saw a shadow and returned to the car. Once back in the car, she started to hear a very faint squeak, squeak, squeak. This continued for a few more seconds until she got so scared she had to drive off. She hits the gas as hard as she could, but the car doesn't go anywhere because there's a rope tied from the bumper to a tree. She slams on the gas again, but then hears a loud scream. She gets out of the car and realizes that her boyfriend is hanging from the tree. And the squeaky noises were his shoes slightly scraping the roof of the car. Tread carefully because we never know what's below the surface. This lunatic is Jason from Friday the 13th. He has terrorized summer camps and teenagers for decades. In the sixth and final episode, this psychopath is chained to the bottom of a lake and left for eternity. So someone in Crosby, Minnesota makes an exact Jason replica. Same face mask, actual machete, same clothes. And instead of putting it in a museum, he puts it in the bottom of one of the most populated dive spots to troll all the divers. Warning if you get scared very easily, this video is probably not for you. This is one of the scariest girls in the world and this is why. So I'm sure a lot of you know about the movie The Orphan, right? Well, it was based on true events, which makes it even more creepier. This is the real girl who pretended to be an orphan. She was a 33 year old grown woman who had a disability that made her look like a child. So she acted like one and got adopted to these two sisters who were schizophrenic. She was so psychologically messed up that she literally convinced the sister to torture her own sons. Long story short, the cops found out what was going on. They came and arrested the two sisters and saved the boys. But then, this is when it gets super creepy. That's when the cops found her crying near the boys and thought that she was a child too and sent her back to an adoptive home where she went missing. No one knows where she's at. This is why you should never play hide and seek. A mom decided to play hide and seek with her two kids. The mom began counting, ready or not, here I come. She begins searching the downstairs kitchen because she knows that they hide there every single time. As she's walking to the kitchen, she starts saying, hmm, I wonder where they are. She looks under the table and sees they aren't there, which is kind of odd. She knew they were too scared to go into the basement alone, but she decided to check anyway. They weren't there either. She began to panic. The mom then says, Jordan, Casey, come out now. Mommy's not playing anymore. 
There was no answer. Panic really begins to set in. She decides to call 911 and reaches an operator. She tells the operator what's wrong and the operator sends an officer to her house. Once the officer arrives, he says, don't worry, we will find them. As she's sitting in the living room, she hears giggling and laughing and hears a closet door slam upstairs. She sprints upstairs and says, Jordan, Casey, you worried me sick. She opened the closet door and nobody was there. While all of this is going on, she hears the doorbell ring. She runs downstairs and finds the officer holding Jordan and Casey. The officer says they were hiding in the shed out back. Then Jordan looks at mommy and says, why were you telling us to stay in the shed? This is why you should always trust your gut. In the early 1970s, a college student decided to hitchhike his way home after class. A car pulls up, a man offers him a ride, and he climbs in. As soon as the car started moving, the student felt totally uneasy, like something was wrong but he couldn't quite place it. Without saying anything, he waited till the next time they slowed down and he flung the door open and ran away. Two years later, he's flicking through TV channels when he comes across this special interview with a death row inmate, and it's just the audio recording, so he hears the interviewer ask the inmate, why did you remove all the door handles inside of your car? The man just goes, well, the first time I tried to kill someone, I picked up a college hitchhiker who got smart at some point and jumped out of my car. So, lesson learned, remove all the door handles. When they showed his picture, the student knew immediately that he was supposed to be the first victim of John Wayne Gacy, aka the killer clown, who had killed over 30 men and boys in his clown room and stuffed them into his basement. Reacting to the scariest TikTok accounts, part one. Today we're going to be talking about an account known as Sitting and Smiling. The username is literally exactly what it sounds like. This girl does nothing other than sit and smile. But it's about to get really creepy, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. The crazy thing is, is her videos have an abnormal amount of views. I mean, look how many. 8 million, 8 million, 4 million. I mean, a ton. But her latest video was posted on 4-18-2020. Why would somebody quit when they have that amount of views? Hmm. The weird thing is, is her bio used to say, I'm not kidnapped. And her bio changed. And I found her Instagram account and it gets even weirder. She hasn't posted in over 40 weeks and she posted this video of a butterfly. And I guess a bunch of her fans are saying MK Ultra. And do you know what MK Ultra is? MK Ultra was a top secret CIA project that gathered information with psychological torture. Also, click the link in my bio to watch my latest YouTube video. This is why you should always live stream at night. A girl was getting ready for bed when she heard footsteps downstairs. She decided to check it out, searched downstairs, and found nothing. She thought it was odd, so she ran back upstairs. She set her phone on her desk to live stream herself sleeping to see what all these noises were. She then hopped in bed and went to sleep. She wakes up in the morning and immediately runs to her phone. She noticed there was 5,000 people watching and the whole chat was spamming, get out now. Her confused begins rewinding the live stream to see what all these people were talking about. She rewinds the stream and finds spirits running up and down the stairs. If you want to see live streams like this, click the link in my bio to download Big O Live. Big O Live is an amazing app where you can literally go live to thousands of people in minutes. So if you can't go live on TikTok yet, you can download Big O Live and literally just start building a community. And for all my gamers out there, if you guys want to play Among Us, you can download Big O Live and you can all be in a sort of like FaceTime call to communicate during the emergency meeting. Click the link in my bio to download it and click the button that says Big O Live. Thank you guys. This boy was missing for two years, but you won't believe what they found under his dresser. Shannon and Michael found out they were pregnant in 2002. They were super excited but had been fighting a lot and their relationship was strained. After their son, Ricky, was born, they decided to break up and share custody over him. At first, everything was going well until the mother, Shannon, would disappear with baby Ricky for days at a time. This led to the dad, Michael, taking her to court for visitation rights. But she never showed up on her court date, so the judge gave the dad, Michael, temporary custody. But soon after, Shannon and now four-year-old Ricky completely vanished. It became apparent that Shannon had abducted Ricky, so a warrant was issued for her arrest. Things only got stranger when Shannon's mom put up posters around the neighborhood saying Michael was the one who abducted Ricky. Suspicious she was somehow involved, Michael did his research and alerted the cops. The cops busted into the grandma's house and found a wooden dresser when they heard a sound come from beneath it. I'm about to show you one of the greatest ghost pictures you'll ever see in your entire life. And you can't find it on the internet. Also, shout out to Mr. Ballin. I think you're going to love this. My husband's cousin went to New Orleans on a historical tour, but they made one stop that wasn't scheduled. To the house of Madame Lelarie. 
Long story short, she was a mistress, socialite, slash slave owner who was found out torturing, mutilating, cutting up body parts, serial killer, super sketchy. And these are the three pictures that she took. I also want to preface that the tour guide said it would be a good idea to take as many pictures as you can because newer phones pick up better things like orbs and such. Here's the first picture. Nothing really to see. Just her house. Here's the second picture. As you can tell, a woman clearly walking in Victorian garb, judging by her shoes. Everyone on the tour said no one crossed this block the entire five minutes they were sitting there. But here's the winner. Is that her herself walking back into her home? The picture behind me might look like a normal photo, but it's actually one of the most sinister real life haunted photos in history. Taken by a professional photographer in 1972 as guests arrived for a wedding, everything in this picture looks happy and normal. But if you take a closer look at the man standing in black, you'll see something odd. You can actually see somebody in white crouching behind the man. All four of the people in the picture said that there was no one behind them when it was taken. The photographer said the same thing and that it would be impossible for someone to crouch behind them without him seeing them. This is a better picture where you can actually see the guy's legs and then in the top you can see his eyes. The picture was even examined by police photographers and they confirmed that it was genuine. This is why you should never fall asleep in class. So in 2014, a little boy named James was just in high school. And after coming back from the bathroom, he was really tired, so he fell asleep in class. So this class was full of pranksters. And while he was sleeping in class, they decided to put him in a coffin and bury him alive. So while he was deep in sleep, they picked him up, put him in a coffin, and put him underground. Then they started shoveling dirt over his coffin. They were gonna let him out in 30 minutes, but their whole class forgot. Then three years later, he literally dug himself out of the coffin and he survived from eating dirt and bugs. So this one time I had to stay at my grandma's because my dad was on vacation. And I was having a huge box of clothes come in and I was not about to have these hoes stolen so I had my friend stop by to put them inside. So I called my friend up and I was like, hey, can you tell me when you get to my house and let me know when you put the package in? She was like, I got you, shawty. I was like, bad girl. So around 10 minutes later, I got a call from her freaking out. She was like, Kayla, is there anybody at your house? I was like, no, my dad's on vacation and I'm at my grandma's. She said, no, Kayla, there is somebody at your house right now. So I started freaking out. I'm like, girl, what do you mean? And she said she saw someone walk across this huge window and then my dad's lights turned on. So I started freaking out. I'm like, what did you see walk across the window? Like, who did it look like? And she said it was just a black tall figure that walked across that window. And around five minutes of being on the phone, freaking out, she said my dad's lights turned off again. Eventually, me and my grandma drove by the house to make sure nobody was there. And of course, nobody was in my house. And it only gets worse. Real scary food stories. Before our story starts, Joseph had already taken out 10 people. And they were usually people that were homeless. Or people who did drugs. He would usually take out these people under a bridge with an ax. One time even taken out a lonely fisherman who was under the bridge and caught him murdering. His full name was Joseph Metheny and even after killing all those people he opened up a burger stand. Now that he opened a burger stand he would put his victims in the meat grinder and use their meat as burgers. Eventually Joseph got caught and told the police that he would sell pork rolls and human meat mixed together and nobody could tell the difference. He said if you season them right they both taste the same. Kind of makes you wonder what's in the sandwiches you're eating nowadays. Like this video if I should do another part of Scary Story. Robert Wan was a 32-year-old married man who decided to spend the night at his friend's house. The house was owned by Joe Price, Victor Zaborski, and Dylan Ward, who were in a polyamorous BDSM relationship. A 911 call was placed at 11.49 p.m. by Victor, claiming that an intruder came in and stabbed Robert. The paramedics who arrived were immediately suspicious as the men were acting very calm and not helping the paramedics. But the crime scene was even more suspicious. Robert had been stabbed three times, once in the heart, and was laying on a bed. The bed was neatly made and there was barely any blood anywhere. A knife was found near his body, but it was proven to be staged as it was not the right length and the blood that was found on it was white there. The autopsy also showed signs of sexual assault. However, the semen found in Robert's rectum, anus, and thighs all proved to be Robert's own semen. Multiple sex toys were found in Dylan's room, including a device called the milking machine, which forces a man to ejaculate using electric shock. A knife the exact length of Robert's wounds was also found missing from Dylan's room. In 2008, Joe, Victor, and Dylan were charged with conspiracy and obstruction of justice, but found not guilty. Robert was allegedly restrained, incapacitated, sexually assaulted, and then killed in that house. 
This is the case of Oliver Stevens. Oliver was a 13 year old boy from Reading, England. He was a student at Highdown and Sick Form Centre. Oliver's family described him as a charming, beautiful boy who was hilariously funny and he was very witty. Oliver's parents said that their son was an enigma so he had autism and suspected pathological demand avoidance. On January 3rd, 2021, reports were made of an assault in Bug Bottoms Field, Emmergreen, Reading. A man who has chosen to remain anonymous said that his wife was walking their dog through these fields when she saw a young boy on the floor. He had seven people around him and his face looked very white. Another person who was walking their dogs that day said that they saw a group of young people standing in Bug Bottoms Field around 3.30pm and they described their behaviours as unusual. Oliver Stevens was the victim of this assault and he was pronounced dead at the scene. Oliver's sister has vowed to get justice for her brother and she said on her Instagram, I'm sorry I failed you, I wish I could have saved you from it all. This incident has not only shaken Reading but it has shaken the whole of the UK. There is a GoFundMe page for Oliver Stevens and all the money that is made is going to go to his funeral, his family and knife crime charities. If you're not able to donate, there is a petition going on at change.org and the point of this petition is to ban the possession of lethal weapons to those who are under 21 if you do not have a license. I'm going to put all the necessary links in my description and in my bio and my heart goes out to Oliver's family. I hope you guys can get the justice you deserve. The Exorcism of Annalise Michelle. This is what inspired the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose. I'm not really going to go into the whole story, but I'll give you guys some backstory before I play the audio of her being possessed. So she was raised in a very Catholic family, very church going people. When she went away to university, she started to experience these hallucinations. When she went to the doctor, they said that maybe she was epileptic or schizophrenic. However, it got worse as time went by. It got so bad that she would actually eat spiders, cockroaches, and lick her own urine simply because she was possessed. If you guys want more of a backstory, I'd be happy to do a video on that, but let's get to the recording. <laughs> In 1834, a fire at a mansion in Louisiana led to the discovery of a torture chamber. This mansion belonged to Delphine LaLaurie and her husband, and she would routinely torture their black slaves. Rescuers found a 70-year-old black woman trapped during the fire because she had been chained up. LaLaurie had done nothing because she had been saving her own furniture. The woman later revealed that she had started the fire in an attempt to escape the torture. She led authorities up to the attic, where seven slaves were tied with spiked iron collars. A year before the incident, LaLaurie had caused the death of a young slave girl. Police only fined her and forced her to give up her slaves. LaLaurie foiled this plan by getting her family members to buy other slaves for her. She then snuck them back into the mansion and continued to torture them until the fire. After a mob appeared at their house in protest, she and her husband fled by boat. The worst of it is, she never actually faced any charges and died in 1842, a free woman. 
This is the story of the almost perfect murder. In 1971, John List killed his entire family, his wife, children and his mother. And he had meticulously planned the whole thing. After killing them all, he placed the bodies in sleeping bags and lined them up. He also wrote a letter to his pastor explaining why he had to kill them. And then he disappeared. 18 years later, he is remarried and tries to do the whole thing again. But this time, he was arrested after a tip was given to the FBI. It took 18 years to capture him. The creepiest thing about all that was that he thought he was trying to save souls. Normal looking photos with disturbing backstories part 6. This seems like a normal hiking trip. But there is an injured woman in the background. She and her friend had gone hiking and slipped off of a waterfall. Being too injured to move, they were there for one day before being found. The woman in the photo survived, but by the time they were rescued, her friend was already dead. This seems like a normal graduation photo. But the man here is Dennis Rader, known as the BTK killer, who has killed 10 people. He was even sending letters to the police describing his crimes. And all that while being a beloved member of his community. I'm going to be telling you a scary childhood story. My family did not have a lot of money. So when my dad lost his job, it forced us out of our house into a new house. My parents found this very cozy four bedroom home on the west side of Chicago. They bought it willingly knowing that someone was murdered there three years earlier. But because of the murder, the house was way cheaper than normal. I didn't know about the murder until I was way older. So moving there when I was only six years old didn't really seem like a big deal to me. I had no idea. That was until I started seeing someone in my room constantly. Years later, I found out the person was murdered in my room. Even though I was just six years old, my room was in the basement because I was the oldest out of all the siblings. This man that I would see in my room was not happy. It was almost like he was angry that I was in the room. It was like he was claiming it for himself. He would constantly tell me to get out. Stay tuned for part two. Hi, I'm Cam, and this is the murder of 10-year-old child actress Judith Barzi. July 25th, 1988, the bodies of Judith, Mariah, and Joseph Barzi were found in their burnt down LA home. Judith and her mother, Mariah, had been shot to death, and their bodies were set ablaze. Judith's father died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Judith Barzi was a child actress born in Los Angeles on June 6, 1978. Her mother began preparing her to become an actress at the age of five, and she got her first role as Kimberly MacDonald in Fatal Vision at six. Her voice Ducky in The Land Before Time and Annie Marie in All Dogs Go to Heaven. By fourth grade, she was bringing in a six-figure income, which paid for her family's three-bedroom house in West Hills, LA. This angered her father, Joseph. Her father was an abusive alcoholic with three DUIs. Judith was only eight when her mom reported the abuse and that he threatened to kill his family and himself on multiple occasions. Judith's father would threaten them often, saying that he would cut their throats or burn down the house. Judith's agent noticed strange behavior from her and took her to a child psychiatrist, who immediately noticed signs of physical and emotional abuse. Child services didn't do anything, however, because Mariah assured them that she would be divorcing Joseph soon. The film All Dogs Go to Heaven was released a year after her death. Played Love Survives in the credits. And Hi, I'm Cam, and this is the brutal murder of 14-year-old Anna Crayagel. On May 14, 2018, at 5 p.m., Anna received a phone call from a classmate. He said that his friend, who Anna had a crush on, wanted to hang out with her. Anna immediately left to go meet her crush, who was waiting for her at a park. This was unusual because Anna's mother said she had no friends. Anna was born February 18, 2004, in Russia. She was placed into an orphanage and adopted two years later by her parents. The couple moved her to Ireland. Growing up in Ireland as an adopted child wasn't easy for Anna. In primary school, she became deaf in one ear due to a tumor and also had very poor eyesight. In primary school, Anna struggled to make friends and was soon suspended for painting a black eye onto herself. Her mother believed she was expressing her own pain on the inside. Anna was bullied online and in real life often and would self-harm at only 13 years old. So of course, when Anna thought that she was about to meet her crush, she went. She followed him to an old abandoned farmhouse from the 1800s. The boys were waiting there with a murder kit. It contained a zombie mask, black gloves, knee pads, shin guards, and their weapons. The two boys bludgeoned Anna to death. One of the boys sexually assaulted her as well. Boys were 13 at the time and are the youngest people in Ireland to ever be convicted of murder. 